Hey guys, Fred here, welcoming you to my Battleground 2014 predictions. This show has been coined as bad, really, really unnecessary, and honestly, it's a show that a lot of people don't want to watch. Looking at the card, though, I can sense this being very entertaining. Let's hope to God it is. Now, on to the predictions. We have a pre-show match, which isn't a title match, and it's not a midget match. So people can't be pissed off with it, right? Yeah, they are. Because it's Naomi v. Cameron. Oh, good God. So, yeah, the breakup of the Funkadactyls doesn't make it onto the main card. That's actually a good thing. However, the problem I have with this is obviously the way they're booking it. Cameron is being made to look, well, like a bitch, and inevitably is going to get the win because she needs a bit of a spur on to do something. I mean, if AJ Lee has now turned face and Cameron goes up against her... It means there's at least a natural antagonist, which is what WWE wants, but Naomi's a better in-ring talent, Naomi's a better better talker. I don't think I can actually validate that claim, but then again, I'm guessing it. Overall, I would want Naomi to win because we finally get to see the match which we wanted to see, which was Naomi versus AJ for the title. But again, as I've mentioned, as AJ Lee is now a face, that cannot happen. And you know what? I'm actually really happy this match is on the pre-show because it means none of us really have to pay attention because this is one of those throwaway feuds that I really don't think a lot of people are interested in. And it's one of those things which makes people think, yeah, this is why Battleground sucks. Yeah. Cameron for the victory just because I just think it makes sense somehow. Lord knows why or any such. Speaking of the Divas match, AJ Lee versus Paige. Now... I want to see this. There's no doubt about it. It's the two best women wrestlers in the division going up against each other. Who wouldn't want to see it? Um, the problem we have with it is it's very predictable. Because, of course, Paige has just lost the title to a recently turned face AJ. Meaning, AJ's going to keep hold of that damn title. <laughs> now, is it going to be the cleanest of victories? Probably not. Will it inevitably lead to a SummerSlam rematch, which will probably be a submission match? Probably. If not, then I'll be very surprised. I mean, Paige is now a heel, meaning we get to see her doing quite well in beating down AJ for most of this match, and it'll inevitably lead to AJ just winning out of the blue like she would do, like any face would do. For me, I would say AJ wins because it just makes sense. I wouldn't have given her the title just to drop it back. I mean, I can tell a lot of AJ Lee fans would end up saying, oh, what the hell's happened here? Are they just doing this to make P P Paige look even stronger than this? <sighs> Seems to be the case. In, if that were to be done that way. However, I don't think it will. So, yeah, that's going to be a pain in the ass for some of you. However, for me, it isn't really that much of a problem. As long as it leads to a rematch afterwards, I don't really care. Next, the tag team title match, which is a two out of three falls match between the Usos and the Wyatts. Now, I said last time that the Wyatts needed to win because it would make sense giving them dominance in their first match. But in the way that the match went about... And the fact that it was very fast-paced, it was very evenly balanced in momentum, and it inevitably gave me a shock victory thinking, shit, I didn't think the Usos could pull out that one. This match makes even more sense, because now it's all about endurance and strength. Now, knowing the Usos have a lot of endurance in them, because they can bottle up what they do to quite late on in a match, and you've also got good strength in knowing that they're Samoans, of course, they've got fucking strength on their side, it's going to be very important to highlight that they're, both teams are actually equally matched here. However, it just seems like the right time to give the Wyatt family something to cheer about. Because obviously, knowing what could happen with Bray later on in the evening, which I will get to later on in this predictions video, you need to kind of give the Wyatts something. And giving a good, strong faction the tag belts is a great thing to go for it. I mean, why would you have this great team around who are very good chemistry together if you're not going to give them the tag belts? I know it's happened with many other teams in the past, but... These guys kind of need the belts to validate themselves a bit. Plus, as I've said, if Wyatt loses, it'll inevitably give something for people to be happy about. So they won't just say, oh, the Wyatts are being buried. God, stupid internet fans. So, the Wyatt family, I'm guessing, are going to win the first fall? Allowing for the Usos to get the second fall, and then anyone's up for guessing, the Wyatt family are going to somehow manage to win the last one. Or... To compound their dominance even more, I'd like to see the Wyatt family actually get two straight falls. Because there's no better way of highlighting a passing of the torch moment in this kind of scenario when you have that happen. So yeah, I would definitely give the Wyatts the win, but whether their margin of victory is by one or two, 
is anyone's guess. Next, well, what do we have here? The Intercontinental Title Battle Royal, of course, featuring an abundance of wrestlers. From, if I get this correct, please tell me. If I get any of them wrong, please do say so. Fernando of Los Matadors, Sin Cara, Titus O'Neil, Zack Ryder somehow, Heath Slater, The Miz, R-Truth, Xavier Woods, RVD, Alberto Del Rio, Fandango, Ryback, Curtis Axel, Big E, Dolph Ziggler, Cesaro, Kofi Kingston, Great Carly, Sheamus, and Bo Dallas. Man, I really, really... Did I get that right? Shit! I think I did! Nonetheless, we've also had two people removed from this match, being Adam Rose and... Damien Sandow, which probably means we're going to get a match between them at the pay-per-view, which is unannounced. I'm going to suggest that off the bat. One thing I will say, this match is very easy to predict, because there are very few names we can actually take seriously to win it. Some are saying Miz because he's just returned, but I don't really think that they would really give him the belt at this time. I mean, his reaction hasn't been very good, and it's not the best thing to do. Dolph Ziggler getting the title would be great, but I, and I don't really know what that would do for him. I mean, him sticking around in the Intercontinental title scene might give him some placing on the card, but not much more. Kofi Kingston, the same applies. Sheamus doesn't really need it, and he can unify the title somewhere else down the line, in my opinion. Therefore, it only really leaves me with two options. Cesaro and Bo Dallas. Now, Cesaro, obviously, because Paul Heyman is going to be off with Brock Lesnar in the foreseeable future, and he needs something to solidify himself in the mid-card. Because, obviously, he won the Battle Royal in WrestleMania. Winning this one will mean, effectively, he is untouchable in Battle Royals, and it'll give him a lot of legitimacy. The other thing, obviously, is his rise to the top, which we've all predicted, isn't going to be as rocket-fueled as a lot of people have thought, which means getting the Continental title on the way up should be fantastic for him. But the winner of this match for me is going to have to be Bo Dallas. Why? Because apparently Bad News Barrett is going to be presenting the title to the winner. Can you imagine? Can you imagine Bo Dallas getting that Intercontinental title handed to him, telling telling Wade Barrett that, cheer up, man. You'll be all good. You'll be injury-free soon, and you can wrestle again. And then he gets hit in the face. Come on, I want to see that smug face being beaten in like anyone else would. So to see Wade Barrett turn face by doing it would be the best thing in the world. So Bo Dallas winning is the best option, but I wouldn't be surprised if they went for something else. Just saying. Next, Jack Swagger versus Rusev. This is one of the most anticipated matches of the night. Why? Because Jack Swagger has actually managed to turn something other than heat into something really positive. He's actually gotten over and it's fantastic to see it. Now, I can see Rusev doing well in this, but actually not winning. You know why? Because if, the, if Swagger hadn't turned face accidentally due to the crowd reaction he got, I would have immediately said, make Rusev win because it would make sense to keep his strength strong run going. In the case of this, Swagger is so over right now, it would be the wrong thing to have Rusev completely crush him even though Lana would love to see that happen. You see, I would like to see maybe Coulter distracting Rusev, or Lana attempting, and then inevitably Swagger hits them that kick, gets in the Patriot lock and wins. Or hits a ridiculous gut wrench powerbomb through the announce table, winning by a countout, leading to some matchup at SummerSlam, which inevitably gets the job done. So overall, you know, Swagger looks a lot stronger in this role than I ever thought possible, and I can thank that to Zeb. So overall, I'm going to say it right here. Swagger wins. Even though I can see WWE giving Rusev the victory, I can sense it, I can see it. But Swagger winning just makes more sense in the long run when you think about it. Now, Jericho versus Wyatt. This is interesting because it's obvious. A lot of people are saying, oh, Wyatt needs to win because he lost to Cena. No. You see, this is Battleground. Jericho has just returned. It's a small pay-per-view. Giving Jericho the win will harm no one. I mean, if you think that Wyatt gaining the victory over Jericho at this show is going to be worth it, then you're a little bit misspoken. You see, so this is building to a big match at SummerSlam where Wyatt is going to get the victory. It's easily noticeable from a mile away. Jericho has just returned. You want to keep the momentum going. Give him the victory. It makes valid sense. So, there's no real problem here. Wyatt's going to do really well in what should be a very psychologically driven match with some hopefully great spots in it. But the one thing I will say, 
Jericho winning will not do anything to harm Wyatt. Sure, Wyatt's getting some boring chants from people who don't know shit, but the one thing I can say is this match will be worth your time. Because it's got two really good wrestlers, two really good gimmicks, and it should work out well. But Jericho is going to get the win here, no questions asked. Now, the match which I'm looking forward to the most out of any on this card, which I bet you guys are guessing right now, is Dean Ambrose versus Seth Rollins. I am pumped for this. Because... I mean, for God's sake, it's Dean Ambrose in a match where he's actually going to be driving the psychology forward by beating the crap out of somebody. I'm happy for that. Not to mention, Seth Rollins is probably going to get help at some point, but in between that, this is going to be a big, long match, hopefully. 15 to 20 minutes, I'm hoping. But the one thing I'm going to count on is an interference finish. Why? Because it would be really good building the story up to the next pay-per-view. Because think about it. If Ambrose gets screwed again out of trying to kill Ambr Ambrose, kill Rollins, effectively, you know what that would mean? That we get to see a very violent end to this at SummerSlam, which everyone is going to want to see, especially knowing that they've just highlighted Dean Ambrose's CZW roots on WWE.com. If that's not foreshadowing enough, I don't know what is. But all I can sense is if they give Ambrose a gimmick match to make his own or a hardcore match to do this in at SummerSlam, it will be fun as hell. Not to mention... Having Rollins win here would just make sense. He's got momentum to keep riding. He's just won the money in the bank briefcase, for God's sake. Not to mention, Ambrose is one of those characters who, while being beaten up, looks amazing. Because his selling is fantastic. His attitude towards it is fantastic. Ambrose is going to make himself look a million bucks in this, because we know he can. And overall, I just don't think Ambrose needs the victory because of the feud itself. He will get the last laugh. He will lose the battle, but he'll ultimately win the war. So overall, Rollins gets the victory here. It makes perfect sense. And finally, we get to the main event. The fatal four-way between Kane, Randy Orton, John Cena, and Roman Reigns for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Now, this is predictable as hell, isn't it? It's John Cena winning. Yay! That's not a good thing. Well, it is a good thing when he's probably going to get beaten to shit by Lesnar at some time. I'm not a Cena hater, as you guys may know, but I do not want to see Cena win if it's going to be as predictable as the money in the bank was. I am just pointing that out. So, what I suggest WWE consider, and what I consider anyway to be the important way of pacing this match up, have Kane and Orton take Reigns out before the match. You know why? Because then you have two heels against one face beating the crap out of Cena for the most of the match before realising, hold on a second, we have to turn on each other here because one of us has to win this damn belt. So then that leads to Kane and Orton beating the crap out of each other for a good portion of the match, allowing for Reigns to come back in and beat them up, then allowing for the Cena-Reigns stare down that we all are hoping for to then see who can win that allowing for the battle of strength to obviously go in Cena's favour. He then somehow hits Kane or Orton with an AA, allowing a very big struggle, but an inevitable victory. If it happens any other way, it's going to piss a lot of people off. Especially me, because I do not want to see Cena in a position where he can just hit them all with, out of nowhere with all of their finishes and just win and be the last person standing. After this match is over, Reigns will still be standing. But the important thing also is that if he comes back, it's likely, in all due purposes, that Triple H is going to screw Reigns out of it anyway, leading to the match. SummerSlam, all is well and good. So overall, Cena's got to win this, but try and make it the most non-predictable way you can, WWE. Just give us a way in the psychology and the pacing of being able to actually make it look like Cena hasn't got a chance. So when it does happen, we don't have to go, oh, I go Super Cena again. And it'll overall make this a much better pay-per-view experience. There you go. How's that sound? And guys, there we have it. The video predictions are done. What are your thoughts on this pay-per-view? Are you going to be watching it? Are you going to be doing anything regarding this show? What are your thoughts? Put them all down there in the comment section below. And if you want to hear all that's coming up with my YouTube channel, including the review on Monday, all you've got to do is click the subscribe button down there. I would appreciate the support. And overall... Let's just have a good weekend of wrestling. That's all we need. I have been Freddie Thomas. You've been people watching. This has been a CCWR production for the CC Network. And I will see you next time. Cheers.